Hi guys, welcome back, Scanlink here, and we're off for more Final Fantasy VI. In the last episode, my bad luck just hit an all-time low, and I lost against Vargas due to the tutorial being late. And he got a lucky critical hit on me with Gale Cut. But in this episode, we're going to beat that arsehole. But before I do, remember in the last episode that I said that there are no important items that could be permanently missable here? Well, at a certain point, they can be permanently missable. And I didn't know about them until I did a little bit of research, so I'm going to go back for them right now. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut until I get back to the room that we need to be in. Um, but yeah, we just got backtrack until we reach that room. And any fights that I get level ups in, I will show. Now I just gotta find my way back. And I have finally made it back into this cave. I've had about five battles. As you saw, I got two level ups and two separate battles. And here comes another one. And I didn't get any level ups in that one. Okay, so in this room, there are two hidden passageways that I've never known about. One is right behind this rock. You see that there is actually a bit of an area going down there? Well, uh, to like the right? Well, I never knew you could actually get there. You've got to go down to the bottom here and run right past it like this. Now, I apologise that I'm not showing any, any battle footage. I'm gonna, come on, two steps, you serious? I'm gonna have to heal now. Sorry that I'm not showing any battle footage at the moment, but it's all the, it's all, it's fights that we've all seen already, and it's pretty much just like, what's the point? I'm just fighting them for, um, well, experience and everything, because we all know how the previous battle with Vargas went, and I'm out of magic. God's sake, I am so low on resources right now. I'm definitely going to have to use a tent or something when I make it back to the save point. Because I don't want to be using up all my tinctures. But yeah, I've been battling almost every battle because I need the experience. And there's no point you showing it off. I mean, this video is probably only 3 minutes by now. And yet I'm already clocked up to 10 minutes. That's how much footage I have to cut out just to show off this bit at the very beginning of the video. That's how you get this one chest that I pointed out. And it's a Guardian. I believe that is a weapon for Locke. And it's a pretty good weapon to check weapon stats. I forgot to show this off. Um, you know what, just a range, it's easier. Uh, where is it? Uh, Guardian, here it is. Randomly evades an enemy's attack. That's pretty much its ability. It has a description right there. It can only be used by Locke at this point. And then when you go to the left, it shows all the status boosts and everything. Like, where it changes. And it also tells you, like, what abilities it can have. So if you can wield it with two hands, you'll do double damage, but you can't use any shields. And Runic is another ability that we'll get into later that Locke or anybody else cannot use. It can only be used by one person. And I'm going to equip that to Locke right now because that's a pretty good weapon. I mean, look at that. Its battle power is increased by pretty much a good 20. 21 even. So that's pretty good. And that will really help. Considering that he's in the front row, he's going to do loads of damage. So that's that one. Now, if I can just get out of here without getting into too many battles, I need to go show off the second um, secret area of this area. Sorry about that, I choked on a bit of phlegm. I've had a bit of a phlegmy fruit today. Locke gained another level! Okay, so far this backtrack has been going pretty well. I've got one level for everybody at this point and a new weapon for Locke. But, once again, it was Brawlers. Now, this was really sneaky. You gotta go through this secret passageway here. Go up a bit, and keep on going. If I could stop getting into battles. A couple of Tuskers, I just flamed their butts, but I need to heal Locke, and I've been stealing a lot of tonics in these battles, so I'm gonna use a couple of them to heal him. There we go. Okay, get out of this menu. Alright, hopefully we can keep on going now. Up a bit more. No, down a bit more. There we go. I've made it through. Okay, get through this little slick in the wall that I've never seen before. And I do not know what this is. I just saw the chest on the map. An Atlas Armlet. I can't remember what that does, so let me have a quick look about that. Because that, for all I know, it could be very helpful. And now the bird's starting to chirp. Okay, just do that. Raises fight damage. Hmm. 
So that raises battle damage if equipped to somebody, I think. Well, Locke's already got the boost. Edgar uses tools all the time. And Terra only has magic as something else. So I'm going to give it to um, Terra. Because her original strength could use a bit of a boost when we're out of magic and we have no other means of attacking. And with that, I'll meet you back at the battle with Vargas. This is going to be fun for me. And I'll show any level ups I get on the way as well. And yes, I am going to use... Um, a tent or something when I reach the save point. Oh, I thought I would just mention something. Bane Touch, you just saw right there, even though it missed Terror. It's not a one instant hit KO move. I was completely incorrect about that. It's actually a poisoning move. It just does poison damage and it doesn't do anything else. That's probably why you've seen that when I've been browsing the menus to show off the stuff we just got. I'm out of antidotes, and I had about one, maybe? So yeah, that's that explains that. Okay, achievement queue. I've, my, I'm up to 18 minutes of recording right now. That's how, many, that's how long I've been battling for, just trying to get back to the save point. And I've got so many tonics, and I've used cure so many times, and yet I haven't had another level up yet. 18 minutes! This has got to be like the, the video I've done the... My, this has got to be the only video so far on my channel that I've done the most cut footage. And that's just by not saying anything for that long. That is ridiculous. I don't even know how long it's going to be after editing right now. Anyway, where's my... Oh, there's a sleeping bag. Recovers HP and MP to 100%. That's what I want. Let's use it. Oh, it only works for one person. Uh, have I got like a uh, tent? I've got one tent. I'm going to use it. This is, this is why I'm showing this off. This is what a tent looks like if you're using it on a save point. If you're on a map screen, it will just fade out to black and just show the tent in the middle of the screen like a game over screen, but it isn't. There we go, and now I'm going to save my progress and then I'll meet you back down to the battle with Argus. If I get any level ups on the way once again, I'll show that off. Terra gained, Terra and Edgar gained another level in that one. That was just right after I saved as well. So that was the first battle after I cutted. <laughs> wow. What I would give for a repel right now. Seriously, it's just been trillium, trillium, trillium since that one battle where I got the level ups. And there's Vargas right there. Okay, I've finally got back to halfway through. I thought I would cut off that uh, the first half of this battle because. We got through that pretty fine. It's this bit where Saban comes in. And I have a new strategy. Hopefully he should have a little bit more HP than the 250. Because we've gained a couple of level ups. His level up... Well, Saban's starting level should level out to an average of what our current team is. Because that's kind of how it works when you gain a new member after a certain amount of time. So I'm going to just skip through this text once again. Because we don't need to see this again after they get blown away. And I have a new strategy. Like I said... First of all, I'm going to change row by pressing, I think, left on the menu so I can access that like I showed a couple of episodes back because you can access the defense or... Um, yeah, I've got 289 HP now, so I've got defense on the right and row on the left. I want to move to the back row so I don't take as much damage. If you could just be so kind. And I've got 255 HP, that's funny. And, oh, I was actually at the back. Okay, never mind. Maybe I didn't want to do that. Because now I'm going to take even more damage. And I just wasted a turn, so you know what? I'm just going to roll with it. I can't use Blitz. I just remembered that because I need to go for the tutorial first because he can't be beaten otherwise. So we just want to do as much damage as possible by attacking and keep our health above at least 100. Because if that Gale Fist is any indication, I'm going to switch Row here now because I think he's going to do it. Yep, I knew it and I didn't switch back quick enough. I'm an idiot. That's going to do even more damage than normal. Actually, I don't think it matters. Yeah, that's still did 100. Am I actually getting closer? I'm getting closer, aren't I? I swear I was supposed to be moving backwards. Okay. But well, that is doing a lot more damage. So what if I did it again? Would I actually edge forward? Well, I need a heal now, badly. <laughs> oh god, he hit me twice. Heal, potion. I'm, I don't care, I need the health. I need 250 HP here. Don't move forward even further. God damn, every time I've clicked row so far, he's moved forward instead of switching from forward to backward. That makes no sense. It must be the mechanics of this battle just messing about with the 
stats or something, but I'm doing 145 damage now, so that should speed things up. And if I can keep my HP up to survive the hits, I should be fine. And Gale cuts a magical attack, so no matter where I am, uh, in forward or back row or more forward, which is somehow a thing, he always does 103 damage, apparently. Ah! This is the tutorial! Of course it didn't happen when I needed it to do so in the last episode. The Master's teachings must use a blitz technique. Choose blitz. Press the directional button left, right, left, then press the X button. How to use blitz. Choose blitz and press the X button so that the icon is then on Sabin. When the cursor appears on Sabin, enter the, the button combination, which is right, left, right. No, left, right, left, bleh. And once you've done that, you press the X button to initiate the attack and it will choose any random target. As Vargas is the only target, it will attack him. So we want to do that. If you make a mistake, nothing will happen. Relax, there's no need to hurry. Yeah, thanks tutorial, considering that you were late last time. Choose Blitz, press the directional button, left, right and left. The game continuously tells you this and it's hard to skip the text as you can see. It stops at every comma. So it is not, it's not hard to miss this. Even though it can take a few tries if you don't understand what it's trying to say. But basically, just choose Blitz when the cursor's on Sabin. Left, right, left, press X again, and it will use the pummel! Boop, 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 and he's done! What, what the? Hey! He already taught you that! If only you had been, hadn't been in such a rush for power. And, and Vargas completely disappears, and guess what? You never hear from him again! This was, in fact, a pointless moment. But god damn, he's required. Sabin! Big brother? The brothers are reunited! Yes, as we haven't already discovered, they are brothers because they have the similar hairstyle, similar physique. They're both, ending, they're both names end in Figaro. They're brothers. We already know this. Why am I explaining this? Younger brother? At first glance, I thought he was some bodybuilder who had strayed from his gym. Bodybuilder? <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Anyway, brother, where are you? What are you doing here? We're heading our way to the Sable Mountains, to the Returner's Hideout, no doubt. I've been watching from afar, hoping that the world might regain some ins some sanity. At this rate, Figaro will be reduced to a puppet state. Our time will strike back has arrived. The Empire is going to pay for what it has done. Think a bear like me could help you fight in your fight? You'd join us? Sabin! Nod. Nod. I think Dunkard would rest easier if he knew his disciple played a part in bringing, a pe bringing peace to the world. Went a little Italian then. Let's get going! Indeed, Locke! Let's get through this- YOU KIDDING ME! Why is my luck so terrible with random encounters? Just wanted to enter the cave. Anyway... Let's grab this chest, which is a nice handy tent, because we'll definitely be needing it after that fight. And now, I can actually- well, actually, I'll check it out once- no, I'll do it now. Why the hell not? Because I might get into another battle on the way. Yes, we have Sabin, the broken character. He's a tank, both offensively and defensively. He is amazing. He has the... I think he has one of the crappiest um, stats, though. But because he has a lot of HP, I tend to keep him at the front most of the time. But because I like to use his special attacks a lot more than his physical, I like to keep him at the back. Because as he's your tank, even though he's more offensive, you want to keep him at the back. Because if we check his skills, obviously he's, it's Blitz. But we've got more techniques than just the pummel. Cuts through an enemy's defenses, which is pummel, of course. So technically it does double damage to your normal physical attack. Aura Bolt, which is in a way a Naruto ripoff of a Rasengan, I guess. It's basically a, a, a sphere-like beam he throws at the enemy, and for the diagonal button, the diagonal directions, you don't have to actually press both those directions at once. You can actually press just down, or left, or basically whatever the two make, which one of the other two buttons that make that direction. So if it's, if it's diagonal down like this one, you could just press down, down, left, or down, left, left to make it work. 
Suplex, however, is a little bit more complicated, and I don't normally use that, but it's like a seismic toss, so in a way, from Pokemon. You pick up the enemy and you chuck it down, and it's pretty funny. It's a, In this version, it's triangle, square, up, down, and up. But I normally use Pummel and Aura Bolt. I haven't got the one that I like to use for multi-enemy combat, but we'll get that soon enough. But yeah, these two blitzes are awesome. I would recommend using Pummel, as that was the one you've already been taught by a tutorial. But if you want to go the extra mile, use Aura Bolt. And I think that's all there is to say about that. I need a heal, but I'll use the tent when I leave this area. Because even though this video may be extremely short, which is quite a change from the norm of my channel so far, the bloody random encounters and me cutting out so much footage that's so useless, I'm already up to 35 minutes, funnily enough. So let's leave this area, finally, and you are seriously joking. I say, let's leave this area, get into a battle right before I leave the area, and then when I want to show something off, I can't do so. Whatever, I'm out of here. Thank you. And we're finally back on the world map, after so long, and we're so close to the Returners hideout, but because this was like a... You know what, I'm going to push myself. I don't need a heal, what am I doing? Sorry, I always do that. I don't know why. I access my menu. I don't need a heal because we're coming up to a healing spot in a minute and the, the random encounters on the map are not that bad. As we already know at this point in the game. They're pretty much the usual small fry and... Are you... I was... I was keeping quiet because I wasn't going to say anything to jinx myself. And you know what? I'm going to leave this battle in just because I can. I didn't do it right again. What is the? Uh, I'm just. I'm doing surplex wrong. I don't know why. Whatever. These things aren't hard to kill, and I don't think we've actually seen grease monks outside of Nash. So it's the first time that we've seen them outside, and their wrench throws are doing massive damage, actually, considering that our health's are only roughly 200. Actually, no. I think that we've bumped into something else in Nash mines, and this is just a different enemy using the same sprite with a different color swap. I think it's the first instance of those, actually. So, maybe it was a good idea I kept that fight in. It's just things are not going well for me at all. Anyway, if I can just come in here to the Returner's Hideout, we've made it. King Edgar, this way, please. Yeah, I've decided to push on a bit further, like I said, because, you know, I'm not actually moving, it's doing it automatically. Dude, could you please move out of the way so we can actually continue moving? <laughs> Thank you. That doesn't normally happen. And now we have uh, control. So, yeah. Uh, this is a store for the returners that you can actually buy stuff from. Um, I don't even know how you would have got through Mount Colt at that stage if you didn't have sprint shoes. If you're not playing any other version, like the Super Nintendo or the Wii Virtual Console version. That would be a nightmare. So, if you haven't picked one up yet and you don't want that torture again, I would recommend picking them up right now. You should have a surplus of money to get them. I want a couple of tents. I mean, I know you can find them in other places, but I just want a couple. Sleeping bags, I'm not too chuffed about at the moment. Eye drops, well, because of a certain glitch in the game, blind does absolutely nothing to your accuracy, so eye drops are useless. And I think that'll be it. And I forgot to show uh, Sabin's equipment, I just remembered. I don't think he comes starting with any relics. I think no characters start with relics, actually, except for one. But that doesn't happen until quite later on. He has no relics. We don't need to give him any relics. Uh, his equipment. He starts off with a metal knuckle, which is like spikes on hands. Think of that one villain from Aladdin and the King of Thieves, that gold claw kind of thing. Something similar to that. Don't know why I used that as a comparison, but it was the first thing that came to mind. And he has also kind of a Kung Fu suit and a leather hat. The leather hat's not exactly the best, but Kung Fu suit's pretty good at this stage, so... He's pretty stocked up well, and Jesus, I'm at 2 hours 22 minutes in gameplay time, that's pretty funny. And for the last thing of business, so I don't have to use a tent, again, we got an inn here that we can actually sleep in for free! How amazing is that? Amazing. And before we finish this off, I'm going to go grab a few items around here that I know of, and I don't believe there are any secret areas around here, except for a couple that I already know of. So, 
Yeah, it was just Mount Colts because, you know, that area is like your first major dungeon and... Oh, I can't actually get them yet. I have to wait till later. Okay. Never knew that. But there is a chest in here that we can go grab, so I'll grab that now. And we received a Phoenix Down! Awesome source. And now I will think I'll end it because I've been pushing this a little bit too much. And I can't end it now because I can't even leave the bloody room. God's sake! Game, let me do what I want to do! Fine, we'll go for the next cutscene, then I'll end it, because there's a save point right in this room, I believe. Yeah, there is. Please let me go to it before you stop me. Thank you! In the next episode, guys. After so much torture from Mount Colts and stuff. In the next episode, hopefully things will go a lot smoother, and we will see what the Returners are going to be doing about the Empire's affairs, South Figaro, and possibly the entire world. And yes, I have made a backup file. I'll see you guys next time.